I've said a number of times that the orchestrator is responsible for reconfiguring the load balancer whenever a service instance comes or goes. On this slide, we're going to take a closer look at that and see how that actually works. What I show on this slide are in internet requests coming in, and then they're hitting a load balancer, which is a type of reverse proxy. And the load balancer has inside of it a table of the IP addresses and ports of the various services that are in the, running on the different virtual machines elsewhere inside the cluster. And then on the right-hand side, I have a VM that's running the first instance of the inventory service, and it's listening on, port HD, on, a, on an HTTP port, let's say. Uh, and I have another instance running on a different VM, and I have a third instance running on yet a third VM. Now, when you create a load balancer, you typically can configure it with a bunch of what's called load balancer service probes. And here I show an example of what two probes look like, but you can actually have many probes that are associated with a single load balancer. With each probe, you specify some amount of time, like 15 seconds. And you're saying to the load balancer, every 15 seconds, I want you to go and probe each of these service instances to see if it is healthy or not. And then you can say probe it on port 80, and then I have another one that we're going to probe on port 8080. And then I can say, and what is the path? So this would be something like causing the load balancer to make an HTTP request to IP address for inventory number one, colon, port 80, slash, healthprobe.aspx, or whatever you want over here. And the load balancer will send this probe out to these three different virtual machines, all the ones that it knows about. And it will do it every 15 seconds. Now I have two rules here. So the load balancer is actually going to probe both ports, 80 and 8080, every 15 seconds across all of these. Because you could have multiple services listening on each of these, but of course each one would have to be at a different port. Okay, so now let's say the load balancer goes and sends a probe out to all those machines and they all returned back an HTTP 200 initially. So that says to the load balancer that all of these machines are saying it's okay, right? HTTP 200 means okay. And so the load balancer says they're all doing fine. So any request that comes in from the internet, I can send it to machine one or machine two or machine number three. Now let's say that machine number one, something has gone wrong. So the next time the load balancer probes all these machines, machine number one returns a 503 back. Because it's not returning back 200, really anything other than 200 indicates failure, the load balancer says, okay, machine number one has not returned a 200, so there's something wrong with it. So any future network requests that come in, I will not send it to machine number one. I will send it either to machine number two or machine number three. Now let's say that machine one heals itself, and so the next time the load balancer sends a probe, 15 seconds later, it now returns a 200. Then the load balancer sets this back to green, indicating that any new requests that come in from the internet can now once again be sent to any of the three machines that are on the right-hand side. One of these machines might go down completely. Maybe the service stops running, or maybe the network controller goes bad, or maybe you know, the, the kernel crashes on Windows, you get a blue screen in that case. So if the load balancer sends out another probe and this machine number two gives no reply back at all, then the load balancer sets this to red to indicate that there's something wrong with machine number two. So now any client requests that come up from the internet will either be sent to machine one or be sent to machine three. 